My name is Andrew Musioka. I am a student at Daystar University, taking Bcom Marketing. I am the Head of Strategy at Voice of Beni Foundation, and I am a millennial on the move. Growing up, I was sort of an ambivert because I was socializing with, with, my, with my friends, I was playing with them, but most of the time I used to be locked indoors. My father had a library, so he used to tell me read and read and read. I used to read books, books of philosophy, uh, cartoon stories. I used to read magazine and space exploration magazines. So growing up, I grew up reading a lot of stuff and having a lot of information. So in effect, I now, in any space I will be, I will be chosen as the leader. In any space with my peers, or if with even people older than me, I will be chosen as a leader. So growing up, I, was, I, I grew up uh, knowing that I am a leader. I, I, used, I was a scout. I was a very young boy uh, and a scout. I used to have oversized shorts and an oversized beret. Uh, but this journey of, 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 of growing up, I, I grew up in scouting. I was the patrol leader. For, and the first time we went to scouting competitions, we won. We won all the way through from, from, from the divisional levels to the national levels. And we ended up uh, leading to Rwanda. That was, I was in class six. And uh, eventually I was, I was chosen as, as, as the best, youngest uh, patrol leader in East Africa. So growing up, this, this, this accolades, um, this gave me, empowered me to want to do more because I, I knew that uh, being a leader, I have a responsibility. I, I went on with my primary education. I was a speaker at my school for two years. Uh, I, I was elected greatly. Um, because I was the son of a teacher, my mother was a deputy head teacher at uh, Olympic Primary School, and also my father was a, was a teacher also. So I'm the son of two teachers, so you can imagine how, how discipline was rubbing off on my side. Um, I used to get normally the hard side of discipline. I was the last born, so a lot of pressure was on me. Um, so uh, basically, I, 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 I became, I grew into the aspect of leadership without even knowing what leadership is. I had these skills, but now I had to know where to, where and when to put them. So um, I went on to, uh, I, I, I went on to, to, to be, to be seen as Andrew, a, a, a person who wants to impact. I used to, every person I used to meet, I used to preach to them. I used to tell them, uh, God loves you and, and, and God, wants, God wants something from you because I got saved at a very young, at a very young age and I knew this leadership came from no one else, but it was a God-given ability and a God-given gift. Being a leader in the journey of leadership, I had to learn a lot. I had to know a lot. And um, the first thing, people usually say that leaders are born. Yes, we can agree with that statement, but I also believe leaders are cultivated because somebody said that champions are made in the gym only, but only awarded in the ring. So the journey of leadership is one where you are cultivated, you are in a secret place, you are uh, in closed doors, reading books, uh, uh, facing challenges, knowing how to solve problems, because leadership is all about solving problems. Leadership is influence. Somebody said that leadership is not talking to people, it is talking with people. So I had to learn such, such lessons when I was young, when I was a speaker, uh, at my primary at primary school level for two years, uh, one thing that people usually told me that I got elected because I was the son of the deputy head teacher. But I, I usually say no, I got elected because I used to go to every class one class, class two class, and ask whether they were okay. If there was bullying, I used to stand up for 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 the children who are being bullied. Sometimes I used to be bullied and beaten uh, because I was standing up for people who are less privileged and who are who are lesser. So um, I came to have challenges because uh, it I and, and knowing how also to solve the problems that are coming ar al along my way. When I joined high school, I was asking myself now, this leadership, where do I apply it? And uh, I came to know that leadership is not about the title. Leadership is how you serve the people. It is, it is not the titles you were given. So um, getting into high school, I became, I, I was very outspoken. So I immediately, uh, I was noticed by the CU chairman. 
I used to be sort of his PA, <laughs> bringing him uh, mandazi and, and, and tea in the morning. But during those sessions, he used to teach me a lot. So leadership in itself, when you're growing into leadership, it is, yes, you might be given the gift of communicating, but now how you use that gift is totally up to you because life is by choice. Uh, it is not by chance. Somebody said it is not by chance, it is by choice. Uh, being growing up as a as a leader in high school, I, I came to, to to be the deputy chair of the of the debate club, and there I I was chosen very young. Someone just came and told me, "You see, so you know how to speak. Uh, come, we have a debate tomorrow." And 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 being chosen at at ran, randomly came to teach me some lessons. Uh, one is that you need to be prepared for anything and totally anything, and you need to have. Uh, uh, solutions. You do not need. You don't need to have solutions. You need to have a mindset that is ready to solve challenges. Whether it will be perfect or not, you need to have a, a mindset that is ready to solve problems. So growing into leadership, I I I I, I was alone. Leadership is isolated. Uh, somebody said you cannot you cannot lead them if you walk with them and talk with and talk the same way as them. So I had to isolate myself. There were many times I I used to I used to sleep. Uh, at midnight, just reading books, uh, books about leadership, books uh, by John C. Maxwell, 21 Irrefutable uh, Laws of Leadership, uh, Robin Sharma, The Leader Without a Title. These were some of the books that shaped my leadership journey. These were some of the books that sh gave me the perspective of leadership. Not only reading books, but staying alone and meditating. I had to, I had to spend a lot of time with myself. And I think uh, this was some of the some of this was the price I had to pay. The price of being alone. The price of not going out uh, with friends when they wanted to go out. I, I used to love I used to love games. I used to love swimming. There's a swimming pool at my school. But there were times I used to sacrifice uh, swimming for three weeks just so that I can spend that time uh, meditating and reading, basically about. Uh, self-help books that will help me gain a different perspective and i think when you spend time alone you grow you see you see when you are in closed doors when closed doors are open they announce you so uh when i was from the closed doors now people are saying ah this guy is different let's let, let's let's choose him he's our leader Um, I was the leader of a, of a group called Research Club. Uh, I was uh, the, I was still the head of of of, of uh, co strategy there, and uh, I came to knew a lot out of Research Club because there I gained researching skills, skills on how to research and to present. So there I came to grow in terms of my oratory skills and knowing how to pitch to people, knowing how to speak in front of a large audience, knowing how to present something that you've researched. So the, the, this also enhanced my, my communication journey. The clubs I was in, I was in Interact Club, uh, which also was dealing basically about uh, 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 dealing with people. So being involved in, in these specific activities in, in school gave me a communication edge and gave me the, the, the perspective of knowing how to communicate to people as a leader. Uh, my biggest achievement was is being the head of strategies at Voices of Beni Foundation. And in it, we were able to hold the first mega public speaking convention in Kenya, the first of its kind. Uh, stay tuned, I'll tell you more about this when you come back. and gentlemen in Africa our biggest challenge right now is not racism our biggest challenge is not even poverty our biggest challenge is communication welcome back guys uh, so I told you I'll tell you about the first mega public speaking convention ever held in Kenya for the first time it's called the I speak convention and uh, the I speak convention is a leadership Con and a convention which was held in the Nairobi cinema uh, the, two weeks ago and we were able to gather over 1,000 young people uh, at the Nairobi uh, cinema auditorium and also we it costed us, us about 
3,000 US dollars, money that we did not have, but by faith we, we the event happened, by, the, by faith we got, we got the money. Uh, we were able to hold uh, over the best public speaker uh, in, in, in Africa. He's called Futurist Kwame Opoku. Uh, we were able to hold speakers from Malawi, international speakers, one of the best speakers internationally. Uh, we were able, also able to hold one, uh, some of the best our best and finest local speakers here in Kenya, the likes of Robert Burale and Pastor T. Mwangi. So it was a very successful convention. Uh, people got impacted, uh, uh, some, some were, people got impacted, young people. There were a lot of positive reviews. Um, and maybe I can share a bit about the journey before we, we went into the convention. Uh, it taught me about faith. Uh, we had no money. The, 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 the auditorium itself costed, was to cost us uh, 65,000 uh, Kenyan shillings, that is roughly 600 US dollars. And uh, by faith, uh, we got money from, interna from uh, an international person. We never met with the person, he just saw the work we were doing as a foundation and decided to send to send his to send money and and pay for the event, we were given donations from from well wishers, people who never met us. He ju they just saw we what what we are doing in, in terms of generation. Uh, why we held this event? We noticed that uh, as a generation, uh, the 844 system, uh, there is no space for communication. There is no space for communication, and as you notice, uh, in the ancient times, people who are great. Uh, in the ancient Greek times, people who are great are people who are great communicators. Great philosophers like Plato, uh, great thinkers like Aristotle, they were great thinkers and they were noticed, they were reputable uh, because of their communication ability, their communication edge. Great thinkers like, uh, great people like uh, the emperor, great emperor Augustus Caesar, they were revered great men and we quote them up to this day because their ability to communicate was so efficient. They say Rome was not built on one day. Well, I have another quote for you. Rome was built on the pillars of communication. The reason why we, we quote them is because they wrote books and they were able to we use their philosophies, their concepts for communication up to now. And for us to develop as a continent, for us to develop as Kenya, uh, for us to achieve great heights of development, we have to, 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 ha to to not to have we have to be great communicators Eight four four does not have a space for communication, so we noticed that as a disadvantage, and we know we and we said, uh, we are going to break to empower our 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 young generation with oratory skills. Uh, there's something we call alpha plus X. Uh, out of this communication uh, abilities, out of our journey in empowering young people with communication, uh, people have been able to get jobs. People have healed uh, from mental health issues, uh, from depression. Uh, we've gotten testimonies from people who, who are healed from depression. People got jobs. Uh, over 10 people so far from the foundation have gotten jobs by using the skills that we taught them uh, in communication. Because uh, somebody said, that I do not fear a man who has practiced 10,000 kicks, but I fear a man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. By perfecting the edge of communication, you'll be able to have uh, an edge when you go to interviews. Interviews are not to prove about your, 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 special, your specialization in the area. It is about you knowing how to communicate. To people. It is about you knowing how to communicate to people. How did our Voices of Benny Foundation begin? Voices of Benny Foundation began with a dream of a young man who was in Form 3. Ma, he is Benny Hien Walubengo. He had a dream and he started the foundation in Form 3. Uh, how I came to join the foundation, we met in Dester University. Uh, along a funny street and he saw me he saw me singing in an auditorium and he said I have seen uh, I've seen you do something great I believe we can do something great in our generation so um, I started we started the journey of and him mentoring me him him teaching me some of the skills he learned him teaching me uh, about how to perfect my oratory skills, how to handle myself, how to handle myself in a stage, how to handle myself even personally as a young man in this generation. Uh, so the I came 
through this journey with him, walking with him in a journey of not only mentorship, but a journey of friendship, a journey of, 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 of brotherhood. He taught me a lot of things. Uh, so I, uh, and he proved my, my, my leadership skills. He saw my leadership skills and he said, uh, you can be the head of strategy at, at my foundation. So we started the journey of, 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 of leadership in the foundation. Um, um, I, being the head of strategies is basically giving clear um, um, strategies on where the foundation uh, can go, the prospects of the foundation, where we, where we, what are opportunities we can cultivate, where, where are spaces where we can, we can, we can make our voice be heard. So the foundation basically does uh, uh, several things. Uh, we do high school missions and talks. We do leadership conventions and, and leadership trainings. We do content creation. We also do publishing. We have mental health programs. And th these are just some of the things uh, we do as a foundation. We've been going for high school missions for the last eight months, uh, impacting young people, young people, young, young girls and young boys in high schools. Uh, we've, we've gone to Anesta High School, we've gone to Limuru Girls, and many other high schools uh, where we found uh, overwhelmingly 600 uh, young people giving their lives to Christ through the same. And this, these are areas where we just want to focus on as a foundation. We've gone for missions. We do content creation with a large following on social media, uh, a following of over 20,000 20, people on, on, on TikTok. We have a following of 5,000 people, a uh, community in, in Facebook, over 5,000 people also in Instagram. Uh, this is just the community we are, and these are the people we've been able to impact uh, through the foundation. Uh, the, and, and it has been a great, a sweet journey, uh, one where we've learned a lot, yes. What advice may I have for people, young people who want to, to follow this path? Um, greatness can just, does not come with one day. As, as people say, as the old adage says, uh, Rome was not built in one day. Uh, the journey of greatness, the journey of wanting to impact people is not an easy one. But one tool I can give any young person out there, mentorship. Mentorship, somebody said that mentorship will enable, will give you 50% of the results of your mentor without even you, without you doing the work. So uh, look for a mentor, look for someone who has gone ahead uh, of you. Look for people who have gone away. Look, look for people who have walked the path of greatness. Go to them and, and approach them, say, I want to learn. Do not go with the conversation of, of money. Go with the conversation, I want to learn a lot. For any young person out there, all I can say is look for someone who has gone ahead of you and learn from them. Don't ask them for anything, just learn. What advice do I have for anyone uh, having inferiority complex? Um, what I can say that inferiority complex is not a conversation of being inferior or having superior people. It is an issue of identity. And I think as a generation we have a challenge of young people who do not really know or have, have, have the information, who do not know about themselves. They don't know about their identity. They look for identity through masks. They, we, go to, we may go to parties and think that is our identity. We may uh, put ourselves in capsules and, and, and think that that is our identity. What I can say is that identity is a function of image. And maybe just to share a scripture, uh, we were made in the image and likeness of God. So if you want to find your identity, if you want to find your image, find God. There, within there lies your purpose. Within there lies your identity. Purpose is a very spiritual thing. So for whoever, for whoever is facing inferiority complex issues, uh, uh, go for purpose, look for identity, look for God. Look for God, there are some things where only God can give. Money cannot help it. Money cannot give you identity. 
money can only buy you things it cannot afford you some things like healing um i think uh, there are things that people who deal with inferiority complex also there's a there's an issue where you think that you have not done enough that you need to do great things you are at the right moment at the right place where god wants you to be just look up god uh, just look up uh, you'll find your image in god you'll find your 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 purpose your being uh, uh, in in god all i can just say to anyone who's looking for for an identity your identity is hidden in god i personally had to know that i personally had to learn that and when i started searching uh, things when i locked myself in the in the prayer closet is when i came to new things about god is when now my identity was formed